Welcome to the Great Loop Radio podcast, brought to you by America's Great Loop Cruisers Association. We're dedicated to sharing Great Loop information and inspiration with those actively cruising, planning for, or dreaming about a Great Loop adventure. I'm Kim Russo. I'm the director of AGLCA. Today, we have the long-awaited stats for 2023. We started calculating these a few years ago and just taking a look at which boats finished the Great Loop in the calendar year. And I am going to be joined today by Michael Martin and Brent Bolin of Great Loop Yacht Sales. They're going to kind of walk us through the different boats that were popular among our new gold loopers and uh, kind of explain to us what the features of those boats are and, and why they think they were popular for the fleet of 2023. So before we jump into the conversation, I want to take a moment to recognize and thank our Admiral sponsors who support AGLCA at the highest level. They are Curtis Stokes & Associates, Great Loop Yacht Sales, Passage Maker Trawler Fest, Skipper Bob Publications, and Waterway Guide Media. As always, we encourage our listeners and viewers to support these businesses that support the Great Loop. And one of those businesses that supports the Great Loop at that top level is Great Loop Yacht Sales. So Brent and Michael, welcome. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having us, Kim. Yeah, thanks for having us back. Yeah, it's great to see you both, and I appreciate you helping me kind of do the rundown of the popular boats for the fleet of 2023. To kind of kick us off, though, I do want to let people know how many boats finished the Great Loop in 2023. So we had a record number, 249 weight crossings last year, which is up from the previous year. Uh, we thought 2022 was kind of a post-COVID bubble so to speak, and thought that would be, and it was a record year, but this year, 2023 exceeded that. So 249 boats reported to us that they completed the Great Loop. 238 of those were brand new gold loopers, and 11 of them were completing for the second or more time. So those are our platinum loopers. So it's a big number. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. And um, this probably will come to nobody's no big surprise to those who follow the Great Loop or have checked out our 2022 or 2021 stats, but main ship was once again the most frequent completer of the Great Loop for last year, and that was with, I'm just checking, 32 main ships reported completion of the Great Loop to us last year, so it was in first place by quite a lot. Um, Michael, I know you have helped your clients buy and sell a lot of main ships in your day. Um, tell us what it is about the main ship and the features of the main ship that make it a popular Great Loop boat. Yeah, the, the main ship obviously uh, year after year has driven the uh, the top rank rank uh, amongst you know the favorite boats. Um, probably probably the biggest thing with the main ships, uh, a couple of things. Um, price point with most of the main ships is is a great uh, price point to get in and do the loop and get out. Obviously, they're a popular boat, so you know when you're when you're looking at coming in and doing the loop, your your one of your high priorities when you're buying your boat should be your exit strategy. And, you know, so, you know, obviously buying a main ship is going to help you with that exit strategy because they are just so popular boats. Um, looking at the boat itself, uh, traditional trawler, uh, fast trawler in some, some of the models, um, great security and safety around the deck movement, which, you know, a lot of people are new to boating and big boating specifically locking and docking and, and handling lines. So, uh, deck operations and safety is huge. Um, Flybridge, you know, two stateroom is a single head, but uh, that comes with most sedans in that size range. Uh, the only one that doesn't have a single head is the uh, 430 main ship, which is a double cabin. It's the only one that is a double cabin. So um, an aft cabin, I should say. They're all double cabins, but uh, an aft cabin. So it's it's overall it's just a great boat, great reputation, good build. Um, you know, it's not a, it's not a Ferrari. It's, it's the Cadillac, you know, it's a Cadillac Chevrolet, you know, it's a, it's a nice built boat for this mission. So Michael, tell us some of the more popular models are the 350, the 390, the 400, you mentioned the 430, um, just real briefly, just kind of tell us the difference between the 350, the 390 and the 400. Yeah. The 350, 390 are the same boat for all intent and purposes. Uh, the 350 came out, it's a 35 foot boat. Um, it, when it originally came out, it was having some ride uh, difficulties in some certain seas, it, it just didn't ride well. They went back to the drawing board, did some naval architecting and came back and put a four foot uh, hull extension on it. Rather than having a swim platform, it's got a full hull under the swim platform. 
now uh all of the boats were retrofitted to the best of my knowledge i've never seen one that hasn't been but that corrected the ride uh but also changed it to a 39 foot uh boat because of the hull length but it didn't obviously change the 35 foot interior cabin space so it's really a 35 foot boat with a 39 foot uh nomenclature so the third Model. the 350 and the third nine 390 are, as you said, pretty much the same boat, which strikes some people as odd when they know there's a 390 and a 400, and those are actually pretty different. So what? how is the 400 different from the 390? Yeah, the 400 is actually five feet larger than the 390. Uh, it's, again, putting those two numbers next to each other, but if you put the two boats next to each other, you can vastly see the difference. Uh, larger flybridge, the 400s have typically have a, a four-place dinette built into the salon or main cabin. Uh, just a nicer layout. Um, you know, five feet is a lot on a boat. So, uh, you know, it just, it just allows for a nicer layout. It also has the summer kitchen upstairs on the fly bridge so you can cook and prepare food and eat up there uh, as well as down, down below. So definitely a different price point, um, a little bit nicer build quality, I would say. Um, I think probably Mainship, in my opinion, is one of those lines that learned from their mistakes or learned from their weaknesses and and tried to make them better model after model. So a little better, a little better build quality, um, definitely a, a, a larger boat. Yeah. And we're, we're spending a little bit more time on the boats towards the top of the list because obviously they are more popular. Um, so just real quick, are they uh, single engine or twin engine and are they upper helm, lower helm or both Michael for most of the, you know, or what are the variables? Yeah, the, the models um, are 34, 350, 390, 400, and the 430 comes in both a uh, sedan version and an aft cabin version. Um, you can get, I, I don't think I've ever seen a 430 sedan with a single engine, but I believe the majority of them come with single or twin. Um, I think they were built pretty evenly, you know, with singles or twins. So if you prefer one or the other, they're out there. You just have to look for them and wait for them. Um, most of the singles at least will have a uh, bow, bow or stern thruster or in most cases anymore, both. Um, a lot of the twins will have one or the other, if not both. So, um, yeah, they come in, in different models. Probably the one unique thing with the main ships, uh, or not unique, but but kind of beneficial if you're looking to single hand the 334 or the 390 could be single handed even the 400 could be single handed pretty pretty easily and that's because they've got the lower helm with the side door uh, the side door is critical in my opinion having single handed a lot of my first loop um, the side door is critical for for single handing they all have the flybridge there's a few models out there without the flybridge but the, the majority of have the flybridge Okay. Well, thank you for that overview of the main ship line, Michael. Brent, your turn on the hot seat. Uh, the number two <laughs> most frequent completing make of the Great Loop in 2023 is Carver with 17 boats. So half basically of the reports of completions on main ships, um, but still 17 is, is it makes it a pretty popular make for the Great Loop. Um, Carver's pretty different from main ship. The lengths of those reporting completion aboard a Carver in this in 2023 were 36 to 57 feet. Um, what are some of the more popular Carver models? Because there's a whole lot more models out there as well. So just talk about some of the models that are popular for loopers and what makes them such. Yeah, absolutely. You know, Carver's a really cool brand. It's really sad. They uh, actually ceased operations in 2021. Uh, started in Wisconsin, back in the day. And so a lot of different models, but I think one of the reasons that it makes it so popular is they do have a lot of aft cabin models. And so for our typical cruisers um, and, and also, you know, the length of the boats as well kind of fit what a looper does. So it's just great for the loop mission. And so some of the models are the 41 and 42s, a uh, very similar boat, but it's an aft cabin motor yacht. Um, you know, you've got two staterooms, two heads, and then the salon and the galley there in the center of the boat, giving some privacy between the two rooms. And that's something we get asked for a lot, right? So for a cruising couple that maybe is going to have guests aboard, um, a little bit of privacy between the staterooms. Um, the 46 motor yacht and the 466 motor yacht are also really popular models. Um, that one you can get in a two stateroom layout or even a third stateroom. So if you've got a cruising family, that's sometimes one that they maybe they want that third stateroom or if they're going to have a lot of company. Um, so it's a neat little uh, layout as well. Carver just does a great job with the use of space. 
And then the Voyager series is another big one. And that's a great boat if you're looking for a sedan with a flybridge. And what I mean by that is when you step off the dock, you're not going to have any stairs that you go up to as you enter the back of the boat, you know, big sliding door and you go right into the salon and the galley and those. And the, the Voyager series, I think, starts at 45 feet, goes all the way up to 57 feet. Um, and then different, you know, they've got a 53 Voyager, 56, 57. So there's several different models in that. And then just kind of on a newer level, Level. If you, some of the newer carvers are a coupe version, and they start at 37 feet, you know, with diesel engines all the way up to, well, it may even be further, but the, the C-52 is a really popular loop boat as well. Um, and then, you know, if you, we, we, we hear requests, hey, I want a lot of living space inside the boat. The Carver 506 is probably one of the boats with the most living space. It's a condo on the water with a lot of different areas where you can entertain or live or work. It's three staterooms, three full heads. Um, we have one of those for sale right now that completed the loop as well and is part of those statistics. Um, but it's a really neat boat as well. So those are some of the models uh, on Carver. A lot of different options, but a great opportunity and, and great option for the loop. Yep. So moving on to number three, coming in just behind Carver with 16 reported completions is Grand Banks, which is a pretty different boat than a Carver. Um, yeah, obviously, both pretty popular. And it's kind of interesting how different a lot of these top boats are. Um, but, Michael, why don't you kind of go ahead and fill us in on the Grand Banks? Most of those who reported completion were on Grand Banks Classics, uh, but there were a few Europas as well. So for somebody who's maybe not hugely familiar with that brand, tell us the differences between those two styles of boats. Well, Grand Banks is uh, kind of the the Nike uh, of of trawlers of the Asian belt trawlers. Um, it, it's the top brand that if you ask somebody what's you know what's a good you know old trawler style boat, um, you know they would probably say Grand Banks, a Monk. You know those two kind of come up uh, quite often. The Grand Banks Classic is definitely the one that everybody kind of draws is drawn to. I believe they were produced a lot more than the than the Europas, which are typically a sedan version boat. Um, you know, the, the Classic has the classic you know trawler lines, trawler look. It has the two the two cabins, one aft, one forward, two heads typically. Uh, they come the aft cabins come in thirty six and forty two, and I think there's a larger one as well. But the thirty six and the forty two are the principal ones that we see on the loop, you know, mainly, I think it's 47 as well. Um, the difference between the aft cabin, obviously, and the, and the Europa, as Brent said, um, is really the accessibility of either not having to walk around the aft cabin or having to go up over the aft cabin in, in some boat brands and boat makes um, versus, you know, walking right onto the swim platform into the cockpit and straight into the salon. Um, you know, if people are trying to get away from going up and down a lot, the Europas or the sedans uh, do help with that. You still obviously have to go up to the flybridge, um, and usually it's a few steps down uh, to to berthing, but um, it's not near as much as the up and over uh, of a of an aft cabin. Great boats. Um, you know, they were primarily built late I think even sixties, late seventies, eighties, nineties. There were some newer ones built in the early two thousands. Um, but they're they're great boats and and again when you talk about exit strategy you know they're a, they're a, a well known brand name boat that people you know are, are looking for and are sought after so um, it's pretty safe to to move in and out of a Grand Banks. All right, uh, number four was a two way tie, ten completions each, and that was Sea Ray and Ranger Tug that had that tie. I've been. Given Brent all the go fast boats, so go ahead, Brent. Tell us about the Sea Rays. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, man, the 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 Sea Ray three ninety and Sea Ray four hundred, I think, is probably one of the one of the most popular Sea uh, Ray boats to do and complete the loop. Uh, it's an aft cabin, two stateroom boat as well. You do have very similar to kind of the, the Carver forty forty one forty two. Uh, great boat. Uh, a lot of different power options. So if you like a certain type of diesel engine, you can usually find Caterpillars or Cummins in the Sea Rays. Um, you know, you are going up some back steps as you enter the boat with that aft cabin. Um, the other thing that's kind of interesting, and I think it could be a really popular one, the upper helm or the helm area of the Sea Ray 390 and 400 is enclosed with a hard top. So no canvas um, really on that um, on that top part. And then it does have a real front windshield 
on those boats. And so it kind of gives you that protection. You know, we don't always get to boat in the most beautiful weather, although most loopers chase that 80 degree mark. There are some cold mornings, but that's air conditioned space, really good entertaining space. Um, sea Ray just does a great job with storage solutions. They build a, a really quality boat, easy for resale as well. And so the 390 and 400 are great boats for that um, and give you that aft cabin, two stateroom layout. So Brent, you so mentioned the hard top which is a little bit unique. Any clearance issues with the hardtop for the Great Loop? Not on the 390 and the 400. Those are both uh, can actually, uh, with folding down the radar um, or the uh, um, anchor light, you can actually do the Western area of the 15 and a half feet on that. Um, so those are actually really great and can take you through all the waterways, you know, around the, around the loop that people normally visit. So great question. Yeah. We already mentioned that the fourth place was a tie with um, Sea Ray and Ranger Tug. So, Michael, I've, I'm going to give you Ranger Tug. But before you go into that, I do want to just announce that the number seven was also a tie um, with Nordic Tug. So if you can speak to the differences between the Ranger Tug and the Nordic Tug and why Tugs in general have become so popular for the Great Loop. Yeah, the, the Tugs definitely are um, have been popular, especially these last few years where people are uh, challenged by insurance and having to go smaller. Um, we also are seeing a lot of, a lot more single handers doing the loop. So the tugs again, uh, kind of have that platform that is really good for, for single handing. Um, the, uh, the three main tugs are American tug, Nordic tug, and Ranger tug. Um, Rangers probably, uh, have seen a higher, uh, placement in the, in the ranking here, uh, mainly due to their price point. Um, there, are, there are 25, 27, 29, 31 and up uh, boat, and they're very easy to find. They're, they're, they're what I call the Swiss Army knife of, of boats in general. Um, Ranger does some very unique and very uh, interesting uh, engineering where seats fold in different directions to give you a dinette, a helm seat, counter space, an aft seat. I mean, just all kinds of different things. They're just really good with you know, getting a lot into a small package. Um, the Ranger doesn't uh, support single handing as well as the other two tugs do, mainly because it, a lot of them don't have the side door. They do have a large uh, sliding open, uh, slide open window next to the helm, but the door really is a key for single handing, which both the Nordic and the Americans have. Uh, Nordic was, uh, in my opinion, Nordic is probably the most solid built of the three tugs. It's a, it, it really, it really chases that uh, traditional tug feel. Um, in my opinion, American tug is the highest fit and finish. Uh, it's a very pretty boat um, and, you know, obviously well built, but the, the side, side doors probably um, are what makes the, the tugs uh, a little bit better for even less line handling, you know, going out the side door and up to the bow rather than skinning, skinning your way down the side. Um, so, you know, it, it's, Rangers are popular. They're, they're out there. There's a lot of them. Nordic's uh, a little bit older and, and there's not as many. Um, but, uh, but again, great boats for the loop, uh, especially if you're looking for something small package, trailerable, you know, a lot of different. Um, uh, oh, and just one, one extra thing. Um, most of the tugs do not have fly bridges. There are several out there who do have fly bridges or they're called command bridges on the Rangers. Uh, but traditionally, it's a pilot house boat that you're driving from inside. Yeah. And I should point out the Ranger Tugs are extremely popular. They tied for number four with 10 completions, um, but Nordic Tug tied for number seven with eight. So real, real close there. Not a big difference in the number, at least in 2023, that finished it. And now we're in 2024 and we had our looper crawl here at the Winter Rendezvous uh, a week or two ago. And there were no, I don't think there were any Ranger or Nordic Tugs, but we had at least two American Tugs. So, <laughs> you know, the boats just seem to change out every year. Um, let's take a quick break and play a message from one of our sponsors. When we come back, we'll continue the top 10 list with number six. We'll be back in a moment. Did you know that every mile of the Great Loop is covered by Skipper Bob guides? Its mile-by-mile -mile format is a great planning tool and essential at the helm. On the most popular routes and side trips, Skipper Bob covers preparation, navigation, bridges and locks, and the best places to visit. Skipper Bob guides are updated each year, and its website keeps you current with navigation alerts and cruising news. To check it out, go to skipperbob.net. Skipper Bob is a proud Admiral sponsor of AGLCA. 
Pebble Isle Marina is the perfect stop for AGLCA members to enjoy docktails, conveniently located in a sheltered harbor on the Tennessee River at mile marker 96. The marina's 600 plus speed of transient dockage offers slips convenient to all amenities and can accommodate boats of all styles and sizes up to 100 feet in length. Our fuel dock offers ethanol free gas and high speed diesel pumps with a ship store for supplies. Our floating seasonal restaurant offers beautiful views of Kentucky Lake from the patio. Check out the Pebble Isle website for details of special offers for AGLCA members. We're back on the Great Loop Radio podcast today. We are un- unveiling the top 10 boat makes that finish the Great Loop in 2023. And joining me to help give more information about each of these makes are Michael Martin and Brent Bolin from Great Loop Yacht Sales. Um, gentlemen, we are up to number six, which is Meridian, which had nine completions, uh, just one step below the ties for number four. Um, Brent, we're, we've been as I said, throwing the go fast boats at you. So go ahead with Meridian. And I know this, um, my perception is that it's even more popular than this list suggests because I, I see a lot of them on the water. I know you have several listed right now. Yeah, absolutely. It's an amazing boat. It really is, you know. And so to, just a little bit of history about Meridian. Um, so Bayliner, right? So love them or hate them. Bayliner um, brought boating to more people than anyone else. They made the affordable boat and really made boating popular in America. So, um, and that's that's a fact. They came out with the, the least expensive runabout boat ever. And so um, the Meridian was kind of founded off of that. Bayliner builds an incredible big boat and they wanted a brand specifically for the big boats. And that's how Meridian got started. And then Meridian was acquired by the Sea Ray Group, which is Brunswick Boat Group, which owns a lot of different groups. And unfortunately, their production quit in 2016. But right now for our loopers, it is a phenomenal boat, still plenty of parts and resources. And their ranges, uh, Meridian made boats from 34 all the way up to 58 feet, I believe. Um, and just one of the one of the things that I think a lot of people love about the Meridians is the Cummins diesel engines. Uh, that was kind of a partnership that they had. You will see um, on some of the newer Meridians, they have what are called Zeus pod drives. So that's something that you want to talk to your broker about and um, and and those pod drives. But some of the models uh, for the Meridian that are super popular for the loop. I mean, obviously, everything they built is pretty much loop capable. Um, the 391, 411. 408, 459, 490. Those are probably some of the most popular loop boats. So just going through those kind of quickly, the 391 and the 411 are sedan style boats with a flybridge on them. The 408 and the 459 are both aft cabin uh, boats. The 459 having a cockpit on the back of it. And the 490 is a pilot house motor yacht. Um, and then, of course, the, the the big mothership, I guess, the 580 is just the big, big brother of that. It's also a pilot house motor yacht. Um, but they build a phenomenal boat with tons of storage. Um, you know, I like to compare it sort of to uh, if you've ever been on a cruise, one of the really unique things on the uh, restroom of the 408 and the 459 is you have a separate door for your shower and then a separate door for your head with a sink in the middle. And so, you know, cruises are like, hey, a family may be coming in from the pool and getting ready to go to dinner, right? Well, same thing, you kind of, you know, you just tied your lines and you're ready to go to docktails and dinner. It's nice that someone could be in the shower and someone else could be putting on their makeup, right? So just a really well thought out boat, um, in the 408 and 459, those are very similar boats. One just has that cockpit on it. Um, but the design, the, also they they have a washer dryer. I mean, just a lot of features that loopers want on that loop boat. And then with the Cummins engines, um, you know, they're they're really dependable and a, and a great boat for the loop. So. And we've already said that Nordic Tug was in a tie for uh, number seven with eight boats that completed the Great Loop. Um, I think that's right. <laughs> the other boat that was in that tie was a monk. Um, so as we're going back and forth, back to Michael, um, tell us a little bit about why a monk would be popular and with eight boats completing the loop last year. Yeah, monk is probably the, uh, you know, some people say it's more popular than Grand Banks, but it's it's up there at that same level with the uh, Grand Banks classic trawlers. Uh, another Asian built boat for the most part uh, later in its life. I think they did build them up in Nova Scotia, um, but uh, the majority of them were built over in Asia. Very similar to the Grand Banks. Um, the 36 is kind of the popular model, aft cabin, you know, walk around trunk cabin. Um, 
so it's it's a it's another very traditional trawler uh, typically lower horsepower engines get you you know better fuel efficiency slower boat yada 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 all those types of things but um side door you know for for good uh walkway uh out onto the main decks uh fly bridge on on them um so it's a it's a great it's a great uh smaller trawler um that people really seem to like you know right up there with grand banks the price point michael how does it compare with the grand grand banks just um, I know, and i know every boat's different but just you know yeah. kind of averages so to speak i would say that they're probably very close um mm -hmm. you know obviously uh, age, um, how they're maintained, all that kind of stuff plays into that. But I would say they're they're pretty much in the same price point. Um, the one thing that I would say, you know, if you were to compare uh, like a main ship against a Grand Bank or a Monk, you know, apples to apples, you're probably going to find that the Grand Banks or Monk are probably going to be higher priced due to the well-known name. Uh, main ship is an obviously well-known name, but its price point is just a little bit different. Okay, uh, moving on to number nine. It is a cruiser's yacht, which uh, Brent and Michael are sitting on Brent's cruiser's 4450 <laughs> right now. <laughs> so we'll let Brent go ahead and tell us about the cruiser's line. You know, another fast boat, right, Cam? So yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and, and my business partner here, he always says, telling me, he always says, you can make a fast boat go slow, but you can't can't make a slow boat go fast, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, and most of these boats we're talking about, right? The Sea Rays, the Carvers, the the Meridians, the Cruisers. You know, you're looking at three and a half, four and a half gallons per hour on your typical loop speed, which is, you know, that seven and a half to eight knots. And so as far as fuel burn there, but, you know, if you do want to go fast, they can burn 40 gallons an hour, right? Um, uh, you know, depending on how how hard you want to push them. But the Cruisers 4450, you know, it's very popular as well as the 405, 415. Those are all great boats that probably completed the loop. Um, I think for me and, and our Cruisers 4450, you know, a family doing the loop um many of you probably know uh, the on fire family who finished the loop on witness it's a boat we represented but it's a great family boat in that it's a three stateroom two head boat and uh, the coast guard says this boat's 43 feet long right it's closer to 45 feet but that's a pretty you know when you're when you're paying for everything in a marina by the foot every time you get a haul out a diver your wax job all those things are by the foot and so i think that's really what makes this boat popular is it's a, a mono hole with three staterooms that's relatively um, one of the shorter boats on on the loop you know, we talk a lot about engines, or I've talked about a lot about Cummins engines. You know, on the cruisers, a lot of these are Volvo uh, diesel engines. And then they also, you will find some Yanmar diesels in these. But any of these boats we've talked about engines, you can all, many people could customize it with different engine package. But just in general, you'll probably see a lot of Volvos when it comes to the cruisers. Well-built boat, also built out of Wisconsin. Still plenty of great service. They're still in business, uh, still building boats, many with outboards now, though, but they build, you know, everything from smaller cruisers, maybe around the 24, 25 foot range, all the way up to 60 plus feet. Um, and just a, a, a well-made boat, a, a, you know, set up for a family to to kind of live aboard and do the loop for a year. So, or I don't know if you've ever contacted cruisers yourself, but uh, the, the customer support for cruisers, I've heard, is just absolutely phenomenal. You actually get a person and they can literally take you down to the nut and bolt of what you're looking for. Yeah, absolutely. That's helpful. Yeah. Yeah. Phenomenal. Yeah. So um, we have a four-way tie for the number 10 position with six completions each. So we get extra boats in this year's rundown um, because of that four-way tie at number 10. Um, so the four are um, the Silverton, the Katie Krogan, the uh, Beneteau and the Fever. So four very different boats. Um, mm -hmm. Michael and I are on a Silverton, just a couple, <laughs> I'm just a couple slips over from where the two of them are sitting right now. Um, I love our Silverton and, and Michael is a fan of go fast boats. So I inadvertently gave him all this, <laughs> the trawlers. Um, but so go ahead, Michael, tell us why yeah. you tell us a little bit more about Silvertons and why you love it and why we have one. Yeah. Um, Silverton uh, is very similar to the Carvers, the, the Meridians, um, in the fact that it has a lot of models that are both sedan and aft cabin. So depending on what you're looking for, whether you want that ease of walking in and out, like what we have is a sedan. You know, I, I really enjoy just, you know, getting on the swim platform right into the salon rather than going up and over. Um, you know, I see the benefits, obviously, of the aft cabin. But uh, in my opinion, 
Um, you know, the the master that's in the hull of our boat is is fine for what we need to what we need it for. It's the rest of the boat that we're spending a lot of our time in, obviously. Um, the uh, typically with the sedans, you're going to be two staterooms forward. Ours is a, a split head, so we can do the same thing as kind of like the uh, Meridians, where they have the head and the and the toilet separate, so that we can do two different things at once. Um, the probably more popular Silvertons are the aft cabins, which is the 43 model and the 435 or 453 model. Um, again, typical aft cabin um, up and over the back cabin and into the main cabin, um, regular flybridge, um, good walkways, you know, great boats, a lot of, you know, a lot of space for the length and, and cost. So uh, Silverton makes a good boat. Um, if you are interested in, excuse me, I got an eye watering here. If you are interested in Silverton and you're pursuing a Silverton, I do want to make sure that uh, it, when you have your survey and the boat is out of the water, the surveyor is going to tell you that the entire bottom is wet. Um, that is a build strategy of Silverton's that they put an underlayment under under the uh, gel coat that basically looks like it's wet. It reacts to moisture meters saying it's wet. So um, definitely if you're looking at a Silverton, they are great built boats, uh, very much up there with Carvers, Meridians, you know, all the rest of them. Uh, just make sure you get a knowledgeable surveyor if you're going after one of those boats. Yeah. And this is the first time Silverton actually made our top 10 list. Um, and Michael, just go ahead and fill us in on the Katie Krogan as well while you're at it. Katie Krogan's a fantastic uh, old school trawler, beautiful boat, uh, nicely built, um, just some some unique lines for most of them that we don't see on on the majority of these other boats that we've talked about. So if you really truly like that, that classic lines, wood, uh, they do have a lot of wood, um, you know, they're they're beautiful boats. Um, but they also, you know, when you have a lot of wood, you have a lot of maintenance. So it, there's that, there's that balance for everybody. So, um, beautiful boats though. Very nice boats. And also though, Michael, correct me if I'm wrong here, but has some, uh, newer boats, newer makes, um, than some mm -hmm. of these that we're talking about because, uh, yeah. they've manufactured more in the, the 2020s, <laughs> even where yeah. some of these boats haven't been, we're talking about, haven't been manufactured in 20 years. Um, right. That said, that also comes at a, at a price point. Um, but yeah, the, the Krogans are absolutely gorgeous. One of my favorites for sure. Um, the other two that tied for the number 10 position were um, DeFever and Beneteau. Now, Beneteau is still probably best known for their sailboats. And I think we did have one Beneteau sailboat cross their wake this year. But uh, most of the six that crossed their wake were um, the Swift Trawlers and a couple of Antares, um, which are very different boats. Um, uh, possibly just one Antares, but Go ahead, Brent, and uh, kind of tell us about the those different Benetos, and then go ahead on to DeFever. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so the Beneteau group does a phenomenal job. Major, major boat builder, right? Build a lot of different brands, very similar to the Brunswick boat group. And, uh, you know, the Swift Trawler, what a layout, right? So just really, really nice. The big walk side decks, um, same with the Ant Antares as well, um, just for movability around the boat. Um and uh, the layouts inside of the Benetos are just phenomenal as far as design, fit, feature. Um, but the Swift Trawlers are gorgeous. Um, I think it's the the newer main ship, if you will, right? So after main ship, unfortunately, they quit production. It really fills that gap. But it's very much um, a really good boat. It is the the Chevy, if you will, of of looping, and um, you know fits the bill for ease of maneuverability, handling. Uh, etc. And we do actually have that Antares is in our, uh, we're, we're representing that boat for sale. That's a phenomenal boat. It's, it's a sedan style boat, but it has a lot of teak on it. Really pretty. But um, for a sedan style boat, one of the things that I like about the Antares is just how wide the side decks are. So if you are looking to have that security as you walk up to handle a line or to drop the anchor, um, the Beneteau group really will do that. I love how high their side rails are and the security you feel on those boats. Um, there's things I don't love about them, but we'll just stick with the loves <laughs> for right now. And uh, but for as far as design and form and function of boats, really, really neat layouts. They really are. So, so and that is the top. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Brad. Oh, oh, I was just going to. I forgot the fever. Yeah, yeah no, I forgot to fever. Go ahead. Yeah. yeah. So, um, just hit on that. That is a big trawler, heavy, 
really nice boat. Um, they've got some in the in the 40 range, 40 foot range, and then some in the 50 foot range. Um, they have aft cabin styles, and then they also have cockpit motor yachts, but most all of them are going to have some type of aft cabin um, on the Defever, but you can get it with the cockpit. Um, just a, a really well-made boat, uh, heavy. You can find a lot of them that are stabilized as well, um, but it's a trawler. It's going to run, you know, that eight to 10 knots. Um, to fever, but would be really good in any kind of heavy water situation um, and very sturdy and durable. Going to have a lot of wood, probably have a little bit of maintenance, but just a beautiful um, trawler. Excellent. So that is a rundown of the top 10, which actually we went through 13 because of the tie, <laughs> um, but the top boats, boat makes that finished the Great Loop in 2023. A couple more fun facts for you. The smallest boat to complete the Great Loop in 2023 was 24 feet, and there were actually four boats of that length. I'm going to give a shout out to the one that I feel like wins the smallest boat award, and that was the Pro Line, which is a center console that Michael and I saw um, repeatedly on our loop in Canada. And um, they basically built um, or had made kind of a canvas tent to go over big portions of the boat um, for sleeping quarters. Uh, so probably the only the second center console I know of that has finished the loop. So congrats to them at 24 feet. We did have three other boats also, though, that were 24 feet. And all three of those were Rossboroughs, which are, are a little bit more common for the Great Loop than a center console. Um, so, Michael, go ahead and fill us in. You know, what is Rossboro able to pack into a 24 foot boat? I mean, they pack in uh, a single cabin, um, you know, pretty much everything we need on the loop. It's just a much smaller package, uh, even even smaller than the Rangers typically. So, um, you know, the Rangers, I think the smallest Rangers, 25. Um, but uh, yeah, the Rossboros are, are a great boat. I mean, people love them. Uh, a lot of the newer ones have outboard. So that gives you, a, you know, even more room inside the boat, you know, since you're not dealing with a, an inboard motor. Um, yeah, they're just a, a very small, uh, small footprint, but, um, you know, if you want trailer, trailer, trailer ability, um, and, uh, ease of moving the boat around and, you know, obviously can't take as much as a defever can, but, uh, you just got to pick your days. Um, but great, great small boat. Well, and there's something to be said for the trailerable boats when uh, we have locks <laughs> that, yeah. um, you know, not only is there scheduled, you know, 90 yeah, yeah. or 100 day closure, 120 day closures on some locks, but we're dealing with an unscheduled, unplanned failure at Demopolis that is probably going to be about a five month closure. And we've got it's not the typical time for loopers to be up there. So there's not a lot, but we do have a handful who are trying to figure out how to get their 40 and 45 foot boats around that lock. Trailerable boats have an easy time of that for sure. So <laughs> something to be said for that these days. So the largest boat that finished the Great Loop in 2023, I think this is the largest I know of of all time, and it is 94 feet. Um, pretty amazing. Uh, um, it is basically a custom built boat. And I had the um, good fortune to be at Hammond Marina visiting some of our members who were waiting for the Illinois Waterway to back be open again after a long scheduled closure and the boat was there and they let me board and take a look around obviously more living space than you would ever have imagined yeah. having on a great loop boat um the style of the boat it really looked a lot like a passenger ferry on the hull with almost a houseboat kind of placed on top of it so really unique looking but with that setup had a lot of freeboard looked very seaworthy let me tell you, they did create some challenges for themselves, and they were sweating both the 19.6 foot bridge on the Illinois waterway and the low water on many of the inland rivers. Um, but they made it. They started and ended in Florida. Um, so that was, you know, towards the second half of their loop. But a 94 footer completed the Great Loop last year. So kudos to them. Um, the other just little stat of note, uh, we calculate the average size of the boats that finished the Great Loop last year. Dropped slightly in 2023. It was 40.1 feet in 2022. It dropped to 40.3 feet in 2023. So uh, almost a foot uh, smaller. Um, and of course, the 94 footer was an outlier and the 324 yeah. footers were an outlier and it all averaged out to 40.3. Um, you know, I'll kind of open that up to both of you, Brent, if you want to go first. But, you know, why does that 40 foot range and that's been consistent for as long as we've been doing this, even before we published stats? Um, why does that seem to be the sweet spot for loopers? 
You know, and it's interesting that's been the the stat for so long, and I'm surprised the 94 footer didn't pull up the average a yeah. little bit. But uh, you know, for me, some of the things that I think about is that that loopers tend to think about is insurance, right? So that 40 foot uh, mark is is really good on the insurance. You start getting over 50 feet, and there are less insurance carriers that will want to insure that boat. Not that they, that you can, but there are just less carriers that are interested in that right now. Um, I think. You know, for our typical looper, which is usually a retired couple, right, doing their bucket list, that's probably the majority of lo loopers, um, that 40 foot is really nice. You get two staterooms, two heads usually in that in that um, size range, and it's great livability, right? There's enough space to get away from each other when you need to, and um, but also enough space to have company and friends over as well. So those would kind of be my you know, reasons. Um, and then I mentioned it earlier, but everything is by the foot, right? And so that 40 foot makes for a really easy ability to find plenty of slips in that range, you know, and uh, keep costs down a little bit versus a, a 94 footer for yeah. sure. <laughs> How about you, Michael, your thoughts? And and if you could also add to your thoughts, um, you know, draft is a consideration for the great loop and overhead clearances so you know is that part of what's leading to that that kind of being your average but tell us your thoughts well i would you know with the the 94 footer or whatever it was um you know i think why it didn't bring up the stats more is because insurance has been pushing smaller boats uh so i think we've seen more smaller boats this year and we're again we're seeing more uh single handing as well so you know typically you'll lean towards a smaller boat for that as well um, the, uh, I, I, I can't, I, I have the same thoughts as what Brent has. I mean, I think that the 40 foot range, um, is perfect for the, the typical looping couple. Um, you know, even if you have dogs and cats or an occasional visitor, you know, it just, it provides you with whatever you need. Our boat has two staterooms, but we can sleep six because we have the sleeper sofa in the salon. So, you know, while it's a primarily a two person boat with one parrot, um, it, it it can sleep six um, very easily. So, um, you know, I think it's just a, a, a good platform. I, I don't think, you know, the, all, the, all the boats that we see on the list here obviously can make the 19.6 air draft. Um, some of them can do the Western Erie. Some of them can do the um, downtown Chicago route, which are are some, you know, high, high points of some people's trips. Um, some can't, but, um, you know, they can, they can do the traditional route that most loopers want to do and a lot of the side trips as well. So, uh, just a, a good, uh, good boat, good size for, you know, handling, um, windage, all those kinds of things that you need to think about when you're, when you're doing the loop. So, um, it's just, a, it seems like, you know, it's a sweet spot for sure that, you know, that it doesn't surprise me that it's right in that area. Great information. For those of you who are perhaps shopping for your Great Loop boat and have been intrigued by some of these that we've mentioned, um, you know, definitely talk to a broker who understands the Great Loop. Um, there's different clearance issues for different route options. So if you um, want to not go to Canada, you know, Brent, Brent mentioned one of the boats that could do the full length of the Erie. These are all things to consider when you're purchasing. So definitely talk to a knowledgeable buyer's broker who can help you. Um, Michael Martin and Brent Boland from Great Loop Yacht Sales. Thank you for sharing all these details today. It was fun going through these stats with you both. Thanks for having us. Thanks a bunch, Kim. Yeah. And thanks to everyone who has watched or listened this week. We'll be back next week with another episode of the Great Loop Radio podcast. Until then, safe cruising.